Hi, I'm Daniela and this is Jocelyn. Thanks for coming to our channel. Today we're going to tell you more about the first time we tried at-home insemination. We'll talk about our experience, the things we liked, and the things we found difficult. In our last video, we talked to you guys about the baby making box. This is our baby making box. Inside of it has all the tools we'll need to try and conceive. Um, we taught you all the great things that we had in our baby making box for tracking ovulation. And this week we're gonna talk to you about what's in there for ICI. So, As we've mentioned in the past, I do have a thyroid condition, which can sometimes make it difficult to get pregnant. So we have been extra about me taking my medications, taking my vitamins and my prenatal vitamins, eating right, drinking a lot of water, exercising regularly. All of this can help improve fertility. I also drank this fertility tea that Jocelyn got for me. It's an herbal tea, which can help support your natural cycle and fertility. Strangely enough, even after seven years, our periods never sunk up to each other until we started trying to conceive. <laughs> and then Danielle's period kept coming earlier and earlier every month to try to catch up to mine until it eventually did. <laughs> yeah, so this definitely threw our ovulation prediction off a little bit with our app because every month it comes earlier. So that means we really had to be diligent about the LH tests and we really had to be diligent about listening to Danielle's body because we knew we couldn't rely on the number of days since that kept changing. Yeah. So since my cycle days kept changing, we really strongly had to watch the signs my body was telling me. Like my BBT, my cervical mucus, my cervical position, and my LH tests. For more information on how to track ovulation, you could check back in our last video. We found a few really good methods for ICI, which can be helpful for all people trying to conceive. Of course, we're always going to strive for success, but we talk to each other ahead of time and we're like, all right, our first time is definitely going to be a trial run <laughs> to not put too much pressure on the situation, on ourselves, on our donor. It's kind of all new territory that we're stepping into. So although we were really nervous, we had the idea in our head, we, you know, we did our research, we have a game plan, we're figuring it out. So this is just, you know, the dry run, so to speak putting the plan into action. Being as this was our first time, we wanted to get as many samples as we could, and we wound up getting four samples within our ovulation window. We were able to get some the day before ovulation, on ovulation day, and after ovulation. So now we're gonna get into the details of how we did ICI. First up is our supplies. That means we're gonna have to bring out the baby making box. Our supplies were a sterile collection cup, a five mil sterile syringe and a menstrual cup. We actually use the flex disc. Okay, so here's our fake sample. Once we were given our sample, we very carefully suck it into the syringe. So once you have sucked it all up, you can see that there's some air bubbles in there. And what you wanna do is to invert it and face the syringe up to push out the air. Because if you push the air out facing this way, you're just gonna lose your sample. So now you have your sample with no air in the syringe. After we prepared our sample and got it into the syringe, we decided to get into the baby making mood. Next, we're going to insert our syringe. When inserting your syringe, you wanna put it in kind of like a tampon towards your cervix, and then make sure that you go all the way in until you meet the flange. Once you've pushed until you meet this, I wouldn't push any further. Then you can slowly insert your sample. That's definitely a mistake that we made at first because we were just so nervous. Like we got this sample and we're like, oh my God, we gotta get it in quick. So we just like, I feel like rushed through it. And we're just like, get it in and like pushed it in really fast. And we were nervous and laughing and we definitely lost some of the sample that first time. So my advice to you would just be to slow it down and push it in slowly and remove the syringe slowly. Yeah. 
I practiced using the flex disc before trying to conceive. So the month prior when I had my period, I just used this flex disc so I knew how to get it in, what felt normal, if it how to get it into a comfortable position. That way I wouldn't be fumbling on the day of when we were already super nervous. Like, is this right? After the flex disc was successfully in place, Daniela laid with her legs and hips elevated up against the wall. For all the fellow yogis out there, that's called waterfall position, just to get a visual there. <laughs> and the reason we decided to use the flex disc was because we found that a lot of OBGYNs would recommend this method because you can leave the disc in safely for up to 12 hours and it will keep the sperm close to the cervix, which is ideal. Keeping the sperm close to the cervix this whole time will greatly improve their chances of swimming up to the egg. After inserting a cup, I spent the remaining 12 hours just re resting and relaxing. We find it's easiest to do this in the evening because then you can just go to sleep and be in a comfortable position and let the sperm swim up. But when meeting your donor for live samples, you kind of have to be prepared to get a sample day or night. And be adaptable. Overall, I think our first time went pretty well. With the exception of our ovulation date changing, <laughs> luckily our donor was really adaptable and willing to meet with us several times that month so that we could increase our chances. We realized after putting in all of the data in the Femometer app that it actually recalculated our ovulation date and showed us that we were right on track with ovulation. So the positive was we were able to actually get a sample on ovulation day even though we figured it out kind of retrospectively. And the flex cup or flex disc was pretty easy to use. And wouldn't you say it was pretty comfortable? Yeah, it was super easy. Once I figured it out, good to go. After talking about it and thinking back, there were some things that we thought we could improve upon. And one of those things was the syringe. We used a five mil syringe. And I feel like for some reason, I just thought we needed this huge syringe to draw up this sample, but we really don't. A one mil or a three mil could definitely get the job done. Another thing about the syringe we used is it has a tip because it's an oral syringe. And that oral syringe tip kind of is uncomfortable when putting it in. So I would probably choose a different type of syringe as well. Another thing we thought we could modify if we had to do this again was our collection cup was pretty big too. So getting the sample out was a little bit difficult since you had to reach all the way down into the bottom of the cup. We'll be sure to share all the links of the products we talked to you about in our description. Don't worry, I will only share the link to a smaller cup, not the big one that we just complained about. <laughs> and also I'll share both sizes of syringes. Look out for our next video to hear whether or not we had a take two of ICI. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We look forward to sharing more with you. Hold on, I have an itchy nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Little fly, little fly, little fly. Adapa Wait, wait. This can all help improve fertility. 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 Don't spill it. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't spill it. Yeah. <laughs> A sterile menstrual cup. Collection cup. This is the menstrual cup. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna use it, but so is like such a word. God. Fucking fuck you.